Hi, I'm Brian Moran, founder of Government CIO. Welcome to Government CIO Magazine. Hello, Bill Giandoni here from Government CIO Magazine. Today we're sitting down with the Deputy CIO of NASA, Ms. Deborah Diaz. Well, it's really interesting because I've been with a number of agencies and every agency I go to struggles with the same issue. Yeah. It's really having an automated way to know where all your assets are at any given time. It's not just taking a snapshot, but it's really being able to have the monitoring equipment and the metrics in place and the discovery tools to be able to map whether that's a computer, whether it's a network um, uh, appliance, whether it's um, you know going down to the different security products that you have, knowing everything that an agency has when so often your agency is is changing, is transforming, your workforce is constantly moving. So how do you get your arms around all of that? And then once you understand what your environment is, then you can actually um, uh, develop the appropriate capital plan uh, mm -hmm. for, for the control of those expenditures and um, cost savings that you mm -hmm. can do. Um, in our case, again, I'll go back to data center consolidation. Um, we did five different activities to really get a good, clear picture of, of what our footprint was. Um, we did a manual mapping. We did a system by system and an application mapping with our enterprise architects across the different centers. We actually did a uh, geospatial application where we did a mapping um, using floor, pr floor, floor prints and actually um, uh, given the power and some of the hot spots that we had, we were able to identify, as I said, those computers under a desk and um, a lot of things that are done by programs and activities. Um, you know, they're, they're small, they go under the radar, they're not particularly in an IT or CIO's um, uh, purview, and so this gives us that visibility to be able to actually go in and, and identify um, what those cost uh, savings or drivers could be, um, and at the same time providing a better service to your, to your customers as well because if you can increase uh, both the, the access or um, the power or computing power for our scientists and our engineers, that provides a better service to them, as well as providing better security for us and um, a, a better um, uh, greening of whatever that IT equipment is as well. Um, NASA's been undergoing a great transformation both with uh, its programs and activities as well as its consolidation and um, it was, uh, there, there were a lot of times when NASA had all of its uh, different centers. Uh, now a lot of our contracts have been consolidated and I'm sure you've heard of our I3P activities that we're doing. Um, with the, the provision and those services, we're actually taking it more of an end-to-end -end delivery of those services. Uh, providing it at an agency level throughout all of NASA. And so we're able to uh, really uh, take advantage of uh, enterprise licensing, commodity buys, um, a lot of bulk purchasing, um, actually using any of the different um, centers to provide services throughout the entire agency, much more of a shared service model. By doing our five I3P activities uh, that were just actually finalized this year, um, whether that's doing um, enterprise business systems, uh, whether that's doing web applications, uh, end user services, by actually consolidating everything and having a, a one single enterprise service desk for that tier zero, tier one uh, provisioning, um, it actually has a great uh, leveraging effect both for financial savings as well as uh, personnel savings and infrastructure as well. Well, we're focusing on the infrastructure services first because that's really where you have your majority of, uh, of expenditures. Um, we've actually made great strides this year in um, a lot of what is in the 25-point plan for the administration. Um, on data center consolidation, we've been able to close 13 of our data centers, but we didn't just stop at the data centers themselves. We actually went after the servers that are under 
uh, and, and computers that are under people's desks, the ones that are in back-end closets. It's identifying your whole footprint of, of where your computing actually exists across each of our centers and actually putting them in a place um, to not only virtualize them, but to also have a very good uh, cost efficiency in, in how you're actually providing those computing services. Um, it's making certain that the right uh, power, that the right um, uh, platform itself is, is uh, the most efficient uh, for use of the agency. I think because um, when Linda Curtin, the CIO, and myself had come in, as well as uh, several other members of our uh, CIO team here at NASA, we actually um, looked at everything, looked at our entire portfolio, and we were on a good path with the consolidation of our uh, I3P uh, contracts, our major contracts, and looking at um, uh, how we're doing business across all of NASA, at each of the centers, um, uh, at an agency perspective that was on the provisioning of enterprise business systems or that's on infrastructure itself. Um, so that dialogue had already begun. Um, whether we had the 10% savings on commodities uh, this past year or whether it was looking for um, that, that um, the, the change in how we're doing business, taking our portfolio beyond the shuttle and constellation programs to our office of chief technologists and some of the new programs and activities that they're spurring, um, our chief scientist, and, and looking at where the future state of NASA is going and making certain that our um, information as well as the technology uh, marries up to the, the goals and aspirations of the agency itself. Um, again, because I've been a CIO at other agencies um, that tried to push down initiatives as well as trying to consolidate um, and just gather money up uh, rather than getting any kind of buy-in. Um, I think at NASA it is a very collaborative approach. You have people not only designing some of your initiatives um, but also leading up as what we're calling host center CIOs where they would be championing a, a certain initiative. So whether that's our Marshall uh, Space Center where they're actually um, the, the host center provider of our enterprise business systems you have the center CIO that has, in his performance plan, he is responsible for this. So it's, it's not just a question of accountability, but it's actually making certain that they just don't have a seat at the table, but they personally feel responsible, and they have the ownership of, of each of the different um, centers, and, and it makes for great teaming as well. It usually doesn't wind up being just one center, it's a couple of the teaming, and that way you'll have that cross-fertilization. and it's. It, you, you've got the lessons from one center versus another center. They're putting as what we used to always um, affectionately refer to as their big agency hat on. Um, it's very easy to have a center perspective or a, a director perspective on something. You know, this is my rice bowl. Um, but when you have to do something from a much larger agency or international perspective, um, it, it I think gets a certain amount of ownership um, that, that is what NASA is famous for. It, it is that, it's that sharing, it's that collaboration, it's, it's, um, it's a certain pride in how we do our work. Um, and, and I think that's, that's that uh, esprit de corps that you're talking mm -hmm. about. And it, it makes for a much richer environment because you get better innovation, you get better ideas, and, and a better um, implementation of whatever technology that we're working in.